Okay, so today we are going to um, start working on the law of sines, and then tomorrow we're going to continue with the law of cosines. So the law of sines and the law of cosines are used to solve for the missing angles in a triangle. So this is going to be in your notes packet. This is section 9.5 in your notes packet. So the law of sines, we can use this anytime we want to find a side and angle measures. If we're given two angles in any side, so the way the angles can be arranged is we can have angle, angle, side, or we can have angle, side, angle. If we are given side, side, angle, then that's going to be a situation where we have to be really careful because we might get two answers or even no answers when we have this kind of situation. This is going to be called the ambiguous case, and we will get to that towards the um, end of our notes. But before we start the notes, I want to go back and I want to talk about how the measures of an angle relate to the side length. All right, so I want you to look at this triangle that I created on GeoGebra. We have 49 degrees, 67 degrees, 64 degrees. Do you notice a relationship between the size of these angles and the lengths of the sides? Of ABC, which is the smallest angle? B. Of A, B, and C, which is the smallest side? Okay. And what is the largest angle? And what's the, um, oh, goodness, this should be called, hold on. This should be called side A. I will fix that. So that should be called side A and this should be called side C. So can you see that how if um, we have uh, angle B is our smallest angle, side B is our smallest side, here's our largest angle, here's our largest side. And the, the GeoGebra program is actually measuring these. So see how as I change this. So I can change this and see how now angle C is the largest angle. And what's the largest side? Side C. Okay. And then where's the smallest angle? A, and then across from it is the smallest side. Okay, so that's something that we want to be thinking about when we are doing these problems. We need to check that and make sure that it all makes sense when we find an answer. So here is the way that the law of sines work. We can set this up as the sine of angle A over side A is equal to the sine of angle B over side B equals the sine of angle C <clears throat> over side C. How many of you have seen this formula before? Okay, not everybody, just a few of you. You might have seen this a little bit in geometry. So it's a pretty easy formula to memorize because the A's, of course, go together, and the B's and the C's. And you can take any two of these. So my, if I'm working with angle A and angle B, I'm going to want to use those two. If I'm working with angle A and angle C, I'm going to want to just use the first and the last. All right, so we're going to look at this first problem, and I'm going to set it up. I can call these angles anything I want. If I call this angle A, then what's this going to be? Side A. Across from angle A is always side A. If I call this angle B, then this is going to be called side B. And so we're looking at the formula that uses A and B. So I'm going to set it up. The sine of angle A over side A equals the sine of angle B over side B. And now we're just going to fill in the values. So we've got the sine of what's angle A? 34 degrees. What's side A? equals, and how's the next part go? The sine of 52 degrees over side B. To solve this, I now have to cross multiply. So when I cross multiply this way, I get 10 times the sine of 52 degrees. When I multiply this way, I get B 
times the sine of 34 degrees. How would I now get B by itself? Divide by the sine of 34, right? So I'm going to get it completely set up. Now we're going to have to get our calculator. What mode should we be in? Degrees. So I'm going to want to go to mode. I'm going to make sure that I'm in degrees. And now we're going to type this in. So we're going to do the sine, or sorry, 10 times the sine of 52. What am I going to have to put after that 52? Parenthesis. And then I have divided by the sine of 34. And I get this answer. We're going to round this to the nearest tenth. Is this a degree measure or is this the length of a side? It's the length of a side, isn't it? So now I have that side B is approximately 14.1 units in length. We want to see if that makes sense. If angle A is 34, it's smaller than angle B. So therefore, side A should be smaller than side B, is it? Yeah. Side A is 10. Side B is 14.1. So does this seem like a reasonable answer? Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, maybe some of you are to the point where you can set this up even without writing out the formula. It's always the sine of the angle over the side across from it and the sine of the angle over the side across from it. What is the problem, though, with this exercise we're doing here? Yep. We are missing an angle. And we need this angle in order to do the problem, don't we? Because the angle and the side must be directly across from each other. If I want to find this side, I have to know this angle before we're able to do it. So what are we going to do? What do the angles add up to be? 180. So I'm just going to do 180 minus 45 minus 64. I'm going to subtract both of those from 180. And so the missing angle then is 71 degrees. So we're going to fill that in. All right. Raise your hand if you can tell me how we can set this up. Sam? Let's check it out. See if we agree. Did he use the correct angle with the X? Did he use the correct angle with the 32? Yeah. So this will be correct. We don't have to write this formula out over and over as long as we understand the pattern. Now we're going to cross multiply. We're going to get x times the sine of 64 equals, multiply this way, 32 times the sine of 71 degrees. How do we now solve for x? Right, so divide by the sine of 64. And now see if you can type it into your calculator and get the correct answer. I'm going to round it to the nearest tenth. Who has it? Jacob? Did anyone else get 33.7? Good. That is correct for that length. We're going to check it and make sure it makes sense. Across from 64 degrees is a length of 32. 
across from 71 degrees is a length of 33.7. Does it make sense? These angles are pretty close together in size, aren't they? So therefore, these sides should be pretty close together in their length. All right, let's look at this problem. We've got Kevin, Adam, and Dan are passing a hockey puck. How far is Kevin from Adam? All right, I want you guys to try this one all on your own. And we'll see who all can get this right. Anybody have it yet? Gianna? 9.8 feet. Did anyone else get that? Very good. Just about everybody. So we had to find the missing angle. We should now make sure it makes sense. Does it make sense that across from 86 would be significantly larger than across from 23 degrees? Yeah, it's good. All right. We're just going to do a few more. And even if you think you know a lot about uh, law of signs, you're going to want to watch this part because we're going to run across some things that may not make sense and we have to do a little more thought with it. Okay. When we're finding angles, this only happens, guys, when we're finding angles. It's possible to have one solution, two solutions, or no solutions. This is called the ambiguous case. It's ambiguous because we're really not sure how many solutions we should find at the beginning. The sine function always has answers between what and what. I want you to think of the unit circle. What is the smallest answer we can get for sine on the unit circle? Is it zero? Negative one is the smallest answer we can get. What's the largest answer we can get for the sine function? One. If the sine function is positive, then the angle can lie in which quadrants on the unit circle? One and two, right? To find the other possible angle, we would subtract from what? Now, let's, let's look at a picture here. Let's say that we do a problem and we get 20 degrees here in the first quadrant. That would just be a reference angle. If the answer was in the second quadrant, we would have the same reference angle. But how would I find the angle that goes from here to here? What would I do? Subtract from 180. That's how we're going to be doing it for these problems, which are not based off of the unit circle, but there will be a relationship. The sum of the angle measures in a triangle, we all know that. It's always 180. No triangle can have two of what types of angles? Correct? They can't have two right. Oh, no triangle. Yeah. No triangle can have two right angles. True. What other kind, though? Obtuse. So we couldn't have a triangle with two right angles, right? Because then those two together would just be 180. It wouldn't work out. So we're going to have to be thinking of all of this as we're working through these problems. 
All right. Information about triangle ABC is given below. Check your answers and give all possibilities. Okay, so we're trying to find angle C. We're going to draw a picture of this. We've got angle A right here is 50 degrees. We've got side AB. So I'm going to call this angle, uh, let's just go, let's go this way. This is C, this is B, doesn't matter. Um, AB, side AB is going to have a length of 4. Side BC, here to here, is going to have a length of 9. We're trying to find angle C. So I'm going to put an X right there on angle C. That's what we're trying to find. All right, tell me the setup. What is the setup? Okay, there's our setup. We're now going to cross multiply. We're going to get four times the sine of 50 equals nine times the sine of X. What do I have to do to get X by itself? Divide by nine. Divide by nine on both sides. Okay, so now I'm going to turn this around. Well, I'll just put it into my calculator. So we're going to do 4 times the sine of 50. We're going to get that answer divided by 9. And that gives me this number. Okay, now that is what the answer is to this part. And that's equal to sine x. How do I find the angle if I have sine x equals something here? Right, I have to do the inverse sine, right? So to solve this for x, x is going to be equal to the inverse sine of whatever this answer is. And we want to be as exact as possible. That's a negative one. So here's what I'm going to do. I already figured out 4 times the sine of 50 divided by 9. It was that. So now to figure out what the angle is, I do second sine of this answer. Guys, don't type it in yourself. You're going to make a, you could make a mistake just typing a number. Arrow up there, get it, and push enter. And then it puts it in there for you. We don't want to round either. We know that rounding changes our answers. There we go. So that angle then for X is going to be about 19.9 degrees. And that's angle C, actually. I'm going to put that there, angle C. Now, what I have to think about, though, is that this angle, 19.9, works for this. But there, the supplement might also work for this. The supplement might also work. So what would I have to do to this to find the supplement? Subtract it from 180. Now, before we write down this other answer, though, I'm going to do 180 minus this angle. Would it be possible, using common sense, would it be possible for this angle to be 160 degrees? Some people are saying yes. <laughs> Let's go to no. Why is it no? What would 50 plus 160 give me? 210. Is it possible to have 210 degrees in a triangle? No, so we're finished. There's only one possibility for angle C. Angle C has to be 19.9 degrees. But we do always have to check for that supplement and see if it could work. Okay? All right. Let's look at this one. All of these are going to be a little bit different. Let's draw our picture. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put B here. It doesn't matter where you put it. Call that 37 degrees. I'll put A here. A, B is 47. So this has to be C. A to C is 29. And we're trying to find the measure of angle C right there. What do I know about the measure of angle C? It has to be larger than what? It has to be larger than 37, doesn't it? So if I get an answer that's less than 37, that would have to be wrong. All right, let's set it up. It's going to go the sine of 37 
over 29 equals sine x over 47. Now, I'm going to do this one a little bit faster in that I'm going to do 29 sine x equals 47 sine 37 degrees. I now have to divide by 29. And how do I now type this in to be able to find that angle x? Second sign of whatever this is. Let's do it all in one step. Save ourselves some time. So we're going to type this in. Second sign, because we're looking for an angle, of 47 sine 37. Close your parentheses. Oh, yeah, that's right. Another parenthesis is needed. Divided by, nope, not yet, guys. Divided by 29. Okay, I need to talk about those parentheses there for a minute. I started to close the parenthesis here, but that would be incorrect because I want to do the inverse sign of this whole thing. Do you understand why it's important to put the parenthesis there and not here? Because then it's going to do the inverse sign of just this, get that answer, and then divide it by 29. So that parenthesis to close that has to go at the end. Or you can do it in two steps like we did before. All right, regardless, we get 77.3 degrees. So angle C is about 77.3 degrees. Now, this angle, though, it's also true that I could have 180 minus this angle as the answer. So let's do 180 minus this answer and see if we get a reasonable answer. We get 102.7. Would it be okay for this angle to be 102.7? It would, wouldn't it? So angle C could also be 102.7. We don't know. Guys, I really want you to understand why this could happen. So I want to show you the two triangles that are formed here. We have the one that I showed you right here. But it could also be the case that this 29 swings inside the triangle. See, look at this. See, this is the way I drew it. Here's the 47. Here's the 29. Is this angle acute or obtuse? Acute, which means it's 77.3. But can't you visualize how this 29 could also swing in like this? And what does that then make this angle? Obtuse. And so that's the reason why we can have either the acute answer or the obtuse angle, because this could swing in, right? But what about on this one? Could this one swing in? If it's nine and I swung it in, can you see how that's going to change that? Because it would have to swing and it would come all the way over here. So I couldn't get two triangles off of that, OK? So here are two answers, and that's an example of where we can get two solutions with the ambiguous case. All right, let's look at number 10. This is going to be a different situation that can happen. All right, now, angle A is given as 114 degrees. I'm going to draw this to scale. I always like to put that angle that's given on that lower left. I don't know. It's just, to me, it makes it easier. So I'm going to make that angle up too. So it's 114 degrees. The other two sides don't really matter so much. I'll put my B here, my C here. Side AB is 34. Side BC is 12. We're trying to find angle C. I'll call it X. Let's just call it C this time. We don't have to call it X. Just keep it as a C. All right, tell me the setup, guys. So it's going to go um, sine of 114 over what? Equals the sine of C over what? 34. Some of you might be getting to where you can almost just see this and think of how it will go in your calculator. Okay, if not, let's go ahead and write it out. So we're going to have 12 sine C equals 34 sine 114. 
We're going to divide by 12. Okay, make sure you can type this in now from this point, all in one step. Did you guys get this right here? Error? Okay, everybody got error. You should get error. Okay, so what that's saying is that this problem can't be done. Here's the reason why. Let me just show you what 34 sine 114 divided by 12. Look what that answer is. What did we say that the values of sine must be in between? Negative one and one, is that in between negative one and one? Common sense, not even math, just common sense. If this is 114 degrees, what must be true of that side? It has to be the longest side, but that side is much longer. This would be impossible to happen, wouldn't it? So this is gonna be no solution. It's impossible to have this situation. It's not going to work. All right, guys. We're going to do one more problem here together. Angle B is given. I'm going to draw it. Here's my angle B. I just like to put it down there at the lower left. The other two sides don't matter. I'll call this A, this C. So that's 47. Side AB is 33. Side AC is 26. We're trying to find angle A. What is the problem with this problem? Right, we don't have the side across from here. So do we just stop and say, no, it's not possible? No, we don't. There you go, Ryan's correct. We're going to have to, we're forced to solve for what angle? We have to solve for angle C, and then could we find angle A? Yeah, okay, so we're going to have to do it that way. So to set it up, okay, I'm going to show you a shortcut here. We're going to do sine 47 over 26 equals sine C over 33. All right, we'll see if you guys are ready for this. See if you can understand what I'm doing. This would end up being second sine of 33 times the sine of 47 divided by 26. Can you guys do that in your head? You will after you do your homework if you can't now because you'll have practiced it so many times. All right, let's push enter. There's our angle. 68.2 degrees. Let's see if it makes sense. Now, do I have to do the supplement? Oh, I think the supplement could make sense too, couldn't it? Angle C can be either approximately 68.2 degrees or what else could angle C be? 180 minus this. Let's see if it makes sense. Sometimes I just hope it doesn't because then I don't have to do so much work, but 111.8. Would that be okay? It would be okay, wouldn't it? Because see how this could swing in on this one because that's 33, so it could swing in. So angle C has to be one of those two. And then we have to find angle A for this situation and angle A for this situation. Are you guys with me on this? You understand what I'm doing? So I'm going to have to do 180 minus 47 minus 68.2. That's going to be one of my answers, 64.8. Or it could be this situation, 180 minus 47 minus 111.8. Yeah, or it could be that, 21.2 degrees. Both of those would work. All right, so both of those could be our answers. 
when do we have to worry about that ambiguous case of having like no solution, one solution, two solutions, only when we're finding a what? Angle, only when we're finding an angle, okay? If we're finding a side, you don't have to worry about it, all right? And if you notice, all of these ambiguous case situations occurred when I had this angle, side, side, right? Angle, side, side, angle, side, side, angle, side, side. If you just, if you didn't have that situation, yeah. Yeah, I know, right? It's also another way that you cannot prove triangles can grow in angle, side, side, like you can use side, angle, side, etc. All right, guys, so that's it for today. Um, any questions? All right.